Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time to take stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to have a conversation about this is Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobe Jr. He's a convener, Country First her Movement. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. The pleasure is mine. Yes, Welcome, lovely to sir. have you here Welcome. to review the papers. Today, we're going to be starting with the punch. And the major headline here says 24 states can't pay salaries without federal government allocation budgets. Um, the writers here are 21 states to pay 1.48 trillion naira salaries in 2024, but generate 9, 914 billion IGR government advice to boost IGR. And Ondo, Yobe, Shokoto, Plateau, Niger, Nasarawa, Adamawa, Cross River, Delta, Abia, others affected. Um, my question is, why can't we, you know, generate money? Why can't the states be able to generate money? You see other countries whereby the states are generating money for the federal government. But in Nigeria, the reverse is the case, whereby each state has to go to the federal government to get some allocation before they are able to do anything. So why, why are we seeing this? Um, does it mean that we cannot stand or each state cannot stand on their own? I think that the first thing to note is that your question is uh, is very opposite for um, my emotions and sentiments on this issue. Okay. I have said repeatedly, I have said repeatedly that uh, every state in Nigeria is blessed by God with amazing resources and riches ineffable. I have said repeatedly that. Uh, uh, this, the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a gold mine. I've said repeatedly that uh, every state should be able to pay a living wage. But unfortunately, like you noted in your question, um, we run a federalism that is pseudo. We run a federalism that is false. We run a rent-seeking and a rent-taking uh, republic such that the states have lost their sense of industry and hard work. I'm speaking deeply. Um, it's a shame that uh, the budget office would say that about 24 states cannot pay salaries when there is no state that has less than 3 million people. That's point number one. And states like Singapore, states like um, uh, Japan, and a few of the very well-doing countries today thrive on human resources. That's the greatest wealth in the world. Uh, if you were to look at the list of the richest men in the world, you don't have miners. You don't have people who uh, own gold uh, uh, gold mines or iron ore. You don't have those who have petroleum license or marginal fields on that list. You have people whose business thrives on the wealth of the human mind, the human capacity, and so. When we talk about the need to restructure this dysfunctional enterprise, we're talking about how to grow out, how to make Nigeria successful, such that uh, the states that you have noted, such that even states like uh, Ebony, states like Yobe, uh, are able to pay salaries and develop. And we, we, we had something that was essentially very successful, efficient and effectual in the First Republic when each of the regions had control of their resources. They generated wealth, like you noted, and paid money to the federal government. The regions were responsible for the survival and the growth of the federal government. So when we talk about the need to restructure this country, we're talking about the need to remove from failure, the need to remove from poverty, from despondency, from joblessness, and from the frustrations that we have today. So I think that uh, this is a wake-up call to the federal government is a wake-up call to Mr. President, who, along with us, in uh, the beginning of this Fourth Republic, along with us, talked about the need for restructuring. Whilst he was the governor of Lagos State, he even went ahead to test the will of the federal government by creating more development centers, the two local governments. And um, from 20, Lagos has... Uh, 57 development centers and local government. So I think that uh, what is important is for him to come back to that true uh, self of his and say to Nigeria and say to the operators of this enterprise, say to every political stakeholder that it's time to return 
to the intentions and the will of the 1963 Federal uh, Republican Constitution is now. We need to have states, uh, if you like, regions that are boisterous, that are healthy, that are, uh, that are growing well, and paying, if you like, 20% to the federal government for upkeep, 30% to consolidated account for, uh, for national emergency, and they are keeping 50% of their resources. Imagine if that were the case. You will still have the gold, uh, the cocoa silos. You will still have the pyramids of granite. You will still have the wealth from palm oil. You will have the wealth from coal and, uh, and what have you. Every state in this country has a competency to pay salaries and to develop uh, its collective uh, world. Okay, uh, well, um, another headline here is uh, still the blame game that we have been seeing. Uh, it's small headline, top right corner there is on the Punch newspaper. It's saying CBN printing of 22 trillion naira under Buhari fueled inflation. That's according to Wale Edun, uh, the Minister of Finance. Um, I'm, I'm just asking, uh, to be fair to the pr uh, previous administration, this money that was printed supposedly printed was supposed to be the one that was in the in the market so so to speak and the old currency was supposed to be mopped up and removed from circulation but the same people who are in government now most of them are the ones that fought against it because they felt that it was uh, it was against them and so this money that was printed is now side by side with the old currency that was not supposed to be in circulation anymore. I don't know how you see uh, that. Uh, do you also believe that that is what fueled inflation and the previous administration should be blamed for it 100%? Yambu, Yambu, a certain governor, when this issue of the printing of currencies came on board, a certain governor, and, and you know him, the governor of Edo State, cried out and predicted that the Naira was going to come on a, under attack, predicted that inflation was going to... And you know he's an economist. Several other economists like Bismarck Rwane talked about the dangers of printing currencies without production, talked about the dangers of uh, uh, having too much money in circulation. And as a schoolboy, when we studied elementary economics, we were told that inflation is simply uh, uh, too much money chasing fewer goods. And so that's where we are, you know. Um, uh, the witch cried last night, the child dies this morning. And that's the conjectures that are becoming rife and uh, consistent. Those conjectures are the reason why we have an inflation that has it's, um, it's, it's gone to double digits and it's still rising. Those are the reasons why there's hunger, disease, or despondency. And then what I do not like is the blame games because um, nobody can tell me sincerely that Nigerians will look the other way, whereas it is known, and lucidly so, that... Um, the past government was an APC government, and the present government is an APC government. It's also known that uh, Mr. President told Nigerians that he was going to continue with the policies of the past government. For whatever reason, he said that, I still do not know. So I think that they lack the moral nexus, they lack the moral competency to blame the past government because it's a continuum, you know, and having failed to effectively uh, do a forensic on what has become of our economy uh, and making policy programmatic that we are unresearched. That's why we're in the matter. That's where we are, where we are today. And I think that the time has come for government to stop the blame games, uh, put its sleeves up, tie up its boots, and get to work. Um, that's what someone is doing in Argentina. That's what someone is doing in, even with the allegations of corruption in Zimbabwe. That's what someone is doing in Zambia. That's what people do. You don't consistently continue to blame the past government. I, even in Nigeria here, someone is doing profound and not talking so much about the past government. In Abia State, you can see what Alex Oti is doing. And it's, uh, you know that Abia State was looted for about 24 years. But in one year, the people are singing Handel. They are singing a good song. That's what responsible leadership and responsible leaders do. 
they get to work and they stop mounting. If 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 they they are so sincere in lampooning the administration of Mohamed Buhari, why was uh, Shatima uh, visiting him over the uh, the weekend? What did he go to do to thank him or to? Criticize him. You know, I, I think that these people should stop playing uh, elementary and banal politics with Nigeria and Nigerians. The time to get to work and stop the blame game is now. Because that's what we're talking about um, with this whole blame game thing. The, there's a small headline at the bottom. It says minimum wage. Labor slashes demand to 500,000 Naira. Do you think this can reflect um, the current economic realities of Nigerians? Do you think 500,000 Naira is enough, especially with inflation rates that is, you know, about double digits right now? You know, there's so much uh, populism rather than reality in this whole uh, gamut of uh, politics and politics. And I, I'm speaking deeply. Um, so many states have not been able to pay 30,000 minimum wage, and you're talking about 500,000. Where are they going to get it from? Are you trying to take Nigeria the way of Venezuela? <laughs> are you trying to take Nigeria the way of uh, uh, Argentina? Are you trying to take Nigeria the way of uh, um, moderate inflation? Where are they going to get the money from? I, I think that, uh, yes, I can understand the pain of labor. Uh, let me even tell you my own personal pain so that you understand how it affects so many people. I live in an estate in Abuja, and um, every night for the past uh, uh, 10 days or so, I run fuel so I can sleep. I have a lounge, and people are there. Between where I stay and the lounge, I spend, I've spent over 500000 on fear in less than a month. Where do I get the money from? Am I a thief? <laughs> and then you're considering, oh, perhaps I should just close down the business until things improve. That's how bad it is. That's why businesses are closing down. And then where are you going to get the money to pay 500000 per worker? Uh, when, as it were, the government, there are so many states that are still owing workers because as they, could, they cannot pay 30000 So I think that there's a major need for a holistic forensic of this dysfunction. It takes me back to my opening. We must restructure this country. There was what uh, one great statement by my mentor, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, he said a long time ago that true compassion is not in tossing a coin at a beggar. But in ensuring that the edifice, the edifice that churns out beggars, that produces beggars, is restructured, you know. And this world that so many politicians tried to redefine and give a bad name was um, established and etched into the dictionary in 1946. Uh, restructuring is what we must do is a silver bullet that will help us cure so many of those problems. I want to say clearly and with, uh, without any, a sense of provocation that no state can pay 500000 today. No state. Even if you were to restructure immediately, it will take uh, the states going back to the drawing board and growing well. Those that have agricultural wealth, and thank God for the blessedness that it's endowed this country with. You have the best arable soil in the world. So you can plant and harvest three, four times a year. You can um, grow palms and, and, and have them mature in four years. You can get your cocoa fields back. You can get your silos of grains and granite, pyramid of granite, rice and sesame back. And that will only happen and can only happen when you return uh, resources, control of resources to the, the regions and the states. Until that is done, and I expect NLC to join those in the civil society who are calling for an overhaul of our dysfunctional structure. Because um, to, to ask government to pay 500000 is like um, um, playing the role of a comic act. Yeah, they cannot but, pay. But, Prof, um, just, just to understand, um, do you really think, it's not part of the headline, but do you really think that if states had the will, they couldn't pay this 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Because I, I, don't see, I don't see really any state that shouldn't be able to pay 30,000 Naira minimum wage. I, I don't know uh, if you have information, I don't. But 
it's always been on my mind that if the states had the will, they could pay at least the 30,000 naira. 500,000 may not be uh, practicable, but 30,000 naira in Nigeria. Yanguri, your question is the answer. They lack the requisite political will. And your question is the solution. If they have the political will, they will, uh, uh, they can and will pay the 30,000. I think about how much you take for, and I think interestingly is in one of your headlines, how much you take for uh, a security vote. Yeah. And they do not account for those votes. So if they were prudent, you know, some a friend of mine asked me, and, and by the way, Alex Oti is my very senior uh, brother and very close friend. Alex Oti, where, they asked me, where is he getting the money from? And I said, that's prudence. That's a political will. Mm -hmm. That's being a good man with a good heart. Governance should be about the people. And so if he's doing what he's doing, it's about the, politically good, the, the, the political will. And uh, it those of humanism, but you see, most of these governors who have refused to even pay the 30,000, you know, that's why I said that asking for 500,000 is like a, a labor playing the role of a comic act, you know. Those who have refused to pay the 30,000 are not paying enough because they cannot pay it. But they are not paying it because they would rather take these monies in the name of security votes and, and put, put it away in their personal accounts and, and the likes. They would rather uh, engage in white, white elephant projects and uh, not think about the people. But you know what? When you restructure, what it does is return ownership to the people. If you're the governor of a state and you're not doing what they expect with their resources, they know where you got the world from. You do not have the alibi of saying that Abuja hasn't paid you or you're waiting for federal allocation, what they call FAC. No, you won't have that alibi because the people will know that the wealth comes from their locality and it goes to the state and from the state, a certain percentage goes to the center. So people will hold their leaders responsible. And this uh, present spate of everybody calling the federal government and calling out the federal government will change. People will begin to call out the state governments. You will begin to insist on responsible and re responsive leadership from the local government uh, to the presidency because the resources uh, reside with the states. That's exactly what we must do. And then we'll get leaders who understand that they must pay salaries as and when due. So what can the common man do right now? Because inflation is at an all-time high. If we cannot pay 30,000 naira and then we cannot even pay 500,000 naira since you've said in your words it's a comical act by the labor, how does this now affect um, the common man? Because regardless of whether the minimum wage is increased or not, the prices in the markets are still going to increase. Transportation is still going to increase, house rent, food, every single thing. So how am I supposed to survive in Nigeria, pending when the restructuring is going to happen? No, let me say that uh, in so many ways, uh, the process of restructuring must begin now. And uh, I, I'm talking deeply. You know, government knows what it must do and should do. You know, the, the politics and politics of uh, blame games will not solve any problem. And then also, inflation will not come down except there is requisite effort to improve on production. And the shortcut to it is declare uh, some sort of emergency in the agri sector. Uh, you know, Nigeria, like I said, has the best soil in the world. You can plant and harvest four times a year, some grain, some products. And if we go back to the farm, but what is also necessary is the fact that you must improve on security of lives and properties. You must protect the farms. Uh, it is not what we have to do where people have to pay tax for bandits to allow them go to farm. You know, we must ensure that government takes over the security of our, of our farmlands and our society and that things are better and the farmers uh, have the requisite confidence and necessary for them to go to the farm. Then number two, we must have uh, a predictable and uh, reliable economic policy. I'll give you a practical instance. You know, these check, push and check uh, economic policies that we see. Uh, I hear that finance has been... Uh, suspended, and I hear that uh, government is uh, 
paying forex directly to a few uh, broad change uh, and uh, i you, you know you ask yourself what is the present economic policy of uh, fiscal policy of government you don't have the one you can place your fingers on so i, I think that what you need to do to grow an economy is to have a predictable reliable and uh, trust what the uh, economic policy uh, a fiscal policy that people can trust for the next one week, two weeks or so, is not where you have monies and you're thinking of what to do and you say, okay, let me wait for two days to know what exactly is happening. No, you should have a predictable economic policy. And then number three, uh, which is very fundamental, government should learn to be truthful to the people. It should learn to tell the people the truth. I'll give you a practical instance, uh, and this will break your heart. Uh, we hear most times news from uh, unreliable social media sources. And you remember just uh, two days ago or yesterday, uh, somebody threw up in the space and it was it was going viral until the, one of the spokespersons, the Mr. President, came to debunk it about uh, UAE giving visas to Nigerians. We have had so many of such things because people are desperate to shop the uh, drowning and dwindling image of the presidency. But I think that the time has come for Mr. President and his team to te tell their image makers that falsehood and lies is not uh, a craft of state. That falsehood and lies is not a policy of state. And then we also must understand that when the people can trust what comes from a governmental spokesmen and women, then it helps sure confidence in the economy. Then very, very importantly for uh, those who think that restructuring will take 10 years or four years, all it needs is the political will. I've said repeatedly that if you cannot uh, expressly convene a sovereign national conference, you can convoke a meeting of ethnic nationalities and together with the members of the National Assembly, a 1,000 man conference for three months can essentially, existentially, and realistically overhaul this constitution and return us back to what we need. Um, the Igbos are saying they want out because Nigeria is not working. The old Sunday Igbo who is back, are saying that they want out because Nigeria is not working. The mid middle belt are saying that they are dissatisfied and they want out because Nigeria is not working. How can you make Nigeria work? If we sit down, like I said, Bola Tinubu was part of the poly, uh, the, those who tinkered with the idea of restructuring as a solution to our problems uh, between the year of our uh, Lord 1999 and 2007. So what is he waiting for? Uh, the confab of 2014 uh, that Jonathan set up talked about the need to overhaul and restructure. This thing won't take two years. It won't take three years. It is just about the need for the requisite political will to get things working. Because if nothing is done sooner uh, rather than later, uh, this poverty, and I pray, I, I, I do not want to sound like a doomsday prophet, but everyone has come out to say that this situation will get worse. Kinsley Mogalu, the former presidential candidate, said that much. Alfred Ruane has said that much. Several economists have said that there is no predictable policy programmatic that will fix this economy. The hunger will continue until government truly, truly uh, folds its sleeves and gets down to drawing board to, to get this country and this economy working. Mm. But what you need first is a sense of ownership. And that's why, for me, uh, this president must convene a conference where uh, ethnic nationalities and the National Assembly people will meet. Decide on how best to govern this country. Decide on what is the best structure. And then put it to the National Assembly, who are members of this uh, of this uh, conference, to, to pass it into law. And then you have a brand new constitution. That's a shortcut to the solution that will devolve power to the constituent units that will give the state control of their resources, that will give us what you call fiscal federalism. And then you find out that our people will go back to explore their wealth. And all these challenges, all these problems will disappear. And interestingly, I am happy that that is chiefly what uh, impliedly Punch has said in its uh, uh, front page, you know, if states are saying they can't pay salaries, you must find out why they can't pay salaries and how 
to make them buoyant enough such that they so that they can pay salaries and that's exactly uh, uh, what we must okay. think out with and ask mr president and his team to begin with alacrity to address the problems with nigeria and overhaul our dysfunctional our rent seeking and meddlesome federalism Okay, let's rush over some, maybe one, two uh, Other more, papers, uh, yeah. papers and questions. Um, do you believe in a state police? That's the question. The headline here on The Guardian is saying, debts on accountable security votes may hobble state police plan. Uh, you talked about it uh, earlier on when we were talking about uh, something else. But this is a headline on The Guardian newspaper. Do you think this state police thing is a practicable thing that can happen in Nigeria? Why not? That's one of the, uh, the quickest way out of the matter. You know, if you don't have state police, how do you protect the states? You know, I, I, I did talk about just a few minutes ago about the meddlesome federalism that we practice. There's no federalism in the world that has a unitary police where the IG of police in Abuja controls policing of over 950,000 square kilometers uh, uh, like us. It's not possible. You can't do it efficiently. And then the, in some times you have community police, you have uh, regional police, you have um, uh, police at, state police and police at different sectors. And, you know, the fear that people exude and express doesn't make sense to me. They tell me that the, the state governors will abuse the police process. Has the federal government abused it. If the federal government has not abused it, then you create layers of control at the state level that will ensure that the state governors do not abuse it. And then who says that you cannot have, like what you have in the United States, the Federal Bureau of Investigation? You can have the Federal Bureau of Investigation that oversees or investigates and ensures that uh, the state police officers are responsible and responsive to the Constitution. You know, I, I think that the fear of state governors controlling. After all, uh, if you have a constitution that uh, spells out the details and how it must happen, and then you create layers of control and levers of control, then the fear won't be there. But you see, now they're removing from the fundamentals and telling us that, uh, okay, the depths and uh, 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 and how governors have been taking out our resources in the name of uh, security votes would affect the, what you need first is the political will set it up constitutionally devolve control and because you know oftentimes when i hear yangu that uh, a state governor is the chief security officer of his state i smile uh, you know sometimes it becomes very comedic and i'll tell you why uh, you know the state commissioner of police can choose not to pick the governor's call is answerable to the idea of police not to the governor Remember what happened a few months ago in Lagos State, where a certain assistant inspector of police uh, told the governor of Lagos State that he wants to get clearance from his uh, superiors before he would take certain actions. And I think that was around uh, Makodo in Lagos. You know, why am I saying this? You know, in actuality, uh, and according to the provisions of the constitution, the state governor is not the security officer, is not the chief security officer of the state. And you cannot have a chief executive officer that cannot protect his state. So there is need for state police. And then for those who are scared of uh, abuse, there must be levers and structures of control. You know, there must be layers of control. And that's all you need. And if you were to, and if Mr. President and his team are uh, strong-willed enough to pursue the process of restructuring, you find out that some of these fears are not tenable. You know, Nigeria is not a nation of cowards. Nigeria is just a badly governed nation where, unfortunately, ethnicity, region, and religion has made it such that uh, one of the cliches that is plausible today in Nigeria, and the reason we're not working as a nation, is that your teeth is better than my teeth, and vice versa. You know, um, the penchant and the predilection for true patriotism does not exist because our structure does not compel responsible and responsive governance. When you have ownership, when you devolve power to the constituent parts, when you have true fiscal federalism, when the Nigerian boy in Karunamuda knows that his wealth 
belongs to him and that he pays the federal government, then he will have a sense of patriotism because he knows that the federal government depends on him and not the other way. You know, when uh, the man who owns an oil well in Eket, whose ancestral land produces oil, but cannot pay his children's school fees because of a skewed federalism and a terrible constitution, has access, control of his resources, and the state government takes care of him, the local government takes care of him because the wealth sits on his ancestral land. And the, the component parts were to pay uh, 20% of what wealth comes from that land to the federal government and 30% to a dedicated account whilst keeping 50%. He will have a true sense of patriotism and love for his country. You don't decree love for country. Mm. Nigerians must be made to love their country. And only a working uh, constitution, only a constitution that is autochthonous and belongs to the Nigerian people, can compel such love, patriotism, and, uh, and dedication to nation. Uh, other than that, all these efforts at uh, getting a rickety engine to run at 120 miles per hour is like a wait for Godot. Okay, um, we have to, because we're a little bit out of time, so we need to rush um, with some of the headlines. So let's move over to some political matters. Um, there's a smaller headline at the bottom that says Edo Assembly begins impeachment again, impeachment process against Shaibu. And on the Nation, so that's on the Guardian. On the Nation, um, it also says 21 out of 24 lawmakers signed Shaibu's impeachment notice. So there's been this saga. Um, with the Edo State <laughs> Assembly. What's your take on all of this that's happening? I'm not making any defense for the ha Assembly. I, I am uh, lampooning all that happens with respect. The biggest business in Nigeria is politics. So those who are around Shwaibo uh, have failed to advise him that uh, in Nigeria, until things are done rightly, is a winner takes all uh, scenario. So Shwaibo shot himself in the feet. When it became obvious that he wasn't going to get a ticket of a party, all he needed to do was perhaps uh, uh, suspend uh, his uh, his battles with the governor until they they are out of office, which is very soon. You know, to decide to fight the party and then organize the primaries in your own residence. You know, I I, I don't know where that obtains. You know, but. That's the politics of Edo State. You know how Edo has been over the while, over the years. And uh, at some point, so many members of the House of Assembly couldn't sit with the others because they were loyal to Adam Sushomole. It's been Edo has been some theater of the absurd, and I hope they get it right with the uh, forthcoming elections. Uh, my sympathy, my heart goes out to Shwaibu, but he should uh, expect that that will happen. Uh, when he decided to organize the prior primaries and then get himself as a candidate of the party, different from uh, the tendencies and the predilection of the leadership of the party. So uh, my heart goes out to him. I think that um, I've told people that I'd rather uh, continue to push for the restructuring of our country than discussing the very many dance in the, in, in the market square, dance macabre, that exists in our country. We'll get it right someday. I'm a great believer in the Nigerian project. And I believe that when philosophers rise up, when great thinkers who truly care about country, not about their pockets, uh, rise up and learn to speak truth to power, our journey out of the Nade to promise would have begun. Uh, let's take a final one from The Guardian here, which is saying that Nigeria's survival uh, depends on food, health, housing agenda across states. Uh, that's according to additional the former minister for agriculture do you uh, believe what he believes no i i think that even the the man in the and let me say this clearly that the most illiterate nigeria knows that uh, uh, our survival is um, um, dependent on what we do with uh, the over, over uh, 500,000 uh, no, I think it's, it's about 50 million hectares of arable land. You know, America thrives basically on agriculture. Most people do not know. And that is why America subsidizes agriculture to the tune of over $40 billion yearly. You know, um, our problem now is basically a food shortage. You see people looting uh, warehouses and looting uh, 
uh, food vehicles across the nation. It's happened twice in Abuja, and it's happening everywhere. You see despondency, you see hunger in human faces, and, and then you ask yourself, how do you get out of it? You don't pump money into the streets, it will worsen the inflation. So every state should go to the farm, turn its arable land to uh, a boisterous farmland. And when we effectively, efficiently, and effectually, or should I agree with the minister, I agree with those who, who have said con consistently and, re uh, uh, and recently, if you like, that we must go back to the farms. We must grow out. We must grow what we eat. And we must ensure that. Uh, but the first question, like I said, somebody asked me recently, said, okay, if we all decide to go to the farms and we're all killed on our farmlands, what happens? So at the core is a call for the security of lives and properties. And like I said, Yamgo, my faith in the Nigerian project is on a trip. So my faith that things will get better is unshakable. My faith in the fact that all of us, if we continue to do what we're doing, and that's why I salute your media for this incisive effort at bringing the news to the people. If we continue to do all that, we're all stakeholders in the Nigerian project. It's not just about politics and politics. It's about patriotism and commitment to great values. I believe that sooner rather than later, the new republic, the new day, and the new tendency that we're expecting leadership will come. All right. Um, so I want to move over to um, another paper. So I want to move over to the Daily Independent. Um, we're talking about high energy costs, and the major headline says telcos spend over 60 billion naira monthly on diesel canvas for tariff review. Um, another one here says Nigeria's mm -hmm. economy not in distress, progressing, says Tinubu. So we're talking about the economy, we're talking mm -hmm. about the high rate of diesel, we're talking about everything just going up. So on one hand, you know, there's a sector that is saying they're spending so much, they want a review for um, the tariffs. And on the other hand, the president is telling you that, you know, Nigeria is progressing. The economy is not in distress. What do you think? Yeah, I just add to the fray there a little bit. The headline also which says that outages, minister threatens discos with license revocation. This same uh, discos, that is on par. And that is on the nation. Yes, yeah, so they are also complaining. Telcos are complaining. Everybody's complaining. But the economy is working just fine. Says the president. You know, let me say that uh, I said this last Thursday, and I'm saying this again. Falsehood, gaslighting, deceit, and chickenery should not be an act of state. You know, uh, everybody knows. Even last year in his October 1st uh, release, he did lampoon the economy. He did cry that the economy is not working. Even in Qatar, he admitted that one. So I don't know why Mr. President likes to gaslight Nigerians and take us for a ride. He knows how bad it is. That's why. Cardozo cannot sleep. That's why uh, the Minister of Finance, uh, what his name, uh, cannot sleep. That's why uh, they're begging the private sector to help. Uh, you know, if you can't sleep because there's a problem in the economy, you can't, on the, on the one hand, tell me that the economy is improving. Now, um, how can an economy be said to be improving when you don't have light? There's light out everywhere. In Abuja, the nation's capital, you don't have light for 10 hours in a day. There's darkness everywhere. And you're telling me about the economy improving? I just told you about my personal constraints and cost. You know, if this video is very clear, you can see that I'm sweating. I ran fear throughout the night. When daybreak came, we put out the generator. Nobody does, you know, all the whole estates, you know. I don't want to tell you where I stay, so you say, oh, there are big people there. But there's nobody using uh, electricity after 6 a.m. You know, and nobody, you know, that's how bad it is. So I don't understand where he gets these statistics of it. And then if the discos or the jenkos were, are thinking of increasing the cost of energy because uh, the cost of production and the likes have gone up, who will pay? Where are they going to get the money from? The, the whole thing is, um, permit me use the word, it's all topsy -tubby. It's, it's, a, it's a tragedy of sorts. So I think that the time has come for our dear president to learn to be true to what he says to us. Nigerians are not deaf, dumb, and blind. Economy is improving and people 
are looting food. People are stopping vehicles that are conveying products. Niger what other people paid for. And they're taking the foods and they're saying, oh, what they need first is life. And let me say this, that uh, those who gaslight Nigerians must understand also that the Holy Book, the Holy Quran, for instance, says, and I quote, that if you're hungry, the first thing to do is to go to look for food before you pray, because you're expected to be strong enough, settled enough mentally to pray. So food is at the core, and food is a problem now. The Bible says that do not uh, muzzle the arms that lay there, that you, do, you should not keep the, the worker without his pay. In so many places across the country, ASUs, lecturers, workers are yet unpaid, months in arrears. And you ask yourself, where are we? Then rather than try to build confidence by telling Nigerians that consistently we're doing our best and we're, we're put on uh, uh, thinking caps and we're folded our sleeves and we've laced up our boots and we're, we're working with you and doing everything to get out of this problem. You're telling me that the economy is improving. How, what are the yardsticks? What are the statistics? Is the dollar uh, at par with the Naira? Or has, it really, has the Naira really come up? You know, the Naira is still floating. It's still on a higgledy piggledy uh, swing with the, the dollar. It's uh, back and forth, you know. The economy, it's, companies are folding up. I just told you about what I told my friend yesterday, that if it continues like this, do they need to have the lounge open? These are fundamental issues that uh, people are, every morning you wake up and go, you have tears in your eyes because you have 10 to 15 text messages when Nigerians are asking you for 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. Some will tell you openly that their kids, the kids have not eaten since last night, so they can't go to school. And then if you have a dint of humanism in you, you have tears welling up in your eyes because how many of these can you attend to immediately? Sometimes I lamp a new cliche. I'll say, okay, I can, I'll do whatever I can when it's possible because you're not going to kill yourself. You know, and then somebody's telling you that they can I don't know why we do this to ourselves. But I think that the time has come for us to ask leadership to stop using falsehood as an act of state and learn to win confidence of the people. There's no power in Nigeria. Small businesses are folded up, big businesses are threatening to go away. And you must build confidence in the economy. You must make, you, you know, let, let me tell you, and, and this is where I want to close myself, uh, my disposition. If you'd like, send 10,000 marketers to Qatar, to Saudi Arabia. If you cannot guarantee your security, they won't come. If you cannot show them a definite economic policy and show them that your currency matters to you, they will not come. That's why somebody said yesterday on TV, on one of your sister stations, that the visits, Mr. President has visited so many countries, how many have come here? They will not come until they can predict the direction of your economy, until they can understand your economic policy. You don't ask me to come to your house when I know that there are rodents, there are tigers and there are lions everywhere. I can only come when I'm sure that other people who you have visited and asked to come first have come. So uh, I do sincerely believe that the time to build confidence in the economy and the people to win the trust and the faith of the people to address homegrown issues is now. Seven except that is done. All these uh, uh, platitudes and gaslighting will count for nothing. All right. Uh... <laughs> Thank that you. That should be a good place to that's, drop That's it a good way to, to drop it, to land. Um, I want to say thank you for joining us to review the papers this morning. Thank you so very much. And let me say that I'm an avid believer in the Nigerian project. Things will get better. Yeah, so right. no matter how bad it is today, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. But we all work towards it. That's the truth. Amen thank to you. that. Thank you very All right. Much. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll be speaking with Professor Chris Mustafa Wonkobia Jr., who's the convener of Country First Movement, and we've just been reviewing the papers. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at a hot topic. Please stay with us.